He'll, no, he will kill me, Mummy, because he touches me. And that's how it came out. And then I started questioning her, where does he touch me? You know, and everything. And I was absolutely, my whole life just collapsed at that point, you know. And was this happening when you were at work or what? Mm -hmm. Yes. He worked in oil, so uh, when he came home, he was sort of like in charge of Holly. I had, you know, I've had various businesses, you know. Uh, you know, I've always been self-employed. I had a hairdressing business, a dress shop, and I had a hotel on Turriff at one time as well. Uh, so, you know, when I, you know, was working, you know, he was in, in charge of Holly. Um, just take us through the process of what happened since uh, you became aware of this. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I, when Holly told me that, you know, I was so, I kept saying to her, are you sure, Holly, are you sure, you know, and she kept saying, I'm not telling lies, mummy, you know, and we've been in a hostel and I was, you know, still covered in bruises, you know, from my husband beating me up, you know, and I, th I, I thought, God, you know, what do I do, you know, your mind just goes into an absolute whirl, you know, so the next day her carer, you know, who was at Helen McDonald, was coming uh, to take her out. And I says, Holly, I says, I want you to tell Helen what you've told Mummy. I says, because she'll know how to put this into process, you know, with the police and, you know, social work and, and everything like that. I says, so you must tell Helen. Yeah, I said, you promise? Yes, I'll tell her. So away she went, and then she came back with Helen, and Helen's not saying anything to me, and I gave Holly a look, you know, one of these mother looks, you know, did you tell her a look? You know, and she's like, gave the nod. And uh, I says to Helen, I says, did Holly tell you about her dad? Oh, yes, she said. And I went, oh, yes, you know. And she went, yes. And I says, are you not concerned about that? Like, and she went, oh, well, well, I'm sorry, but I lost it then. You know, I really did lose it, you know. And I went, oh, well, <laughs> you know, in a very loud voice. You know, I says, if you're not concerned about this, I says, I am. I says, and I'm going to be going to the police about this. All right, then, this is Manchester Radio Online. That was part of an interview I did earlier on the week with Anne Gregg, and we're live in the studio with Robert Green. The phone number is 0161 202 1677. We are covering the Holly Gregg story right through until 10pm, and we really want to hear what you think of this whole situation, so please get in touch by email, MSN or by phone. Studio at ManchesterRadioOnline.com is the email and MSN ad. You can send us questions or comments in real time, and we will always like to hear... Uh, what you're thinking of the show and the issues being covered. And if you're listening, we know you're on the internet, so there's no excuse. Add us on MSN and show your support for Robert Green. And, of course, for Anne and Holly Gregg, who I know are listening at the minute, and they always appreciate words of support and encouragement. Um, an MSN that came in there, let me, let me just try and find it, uh, it came from Greg, and he says, I have sent two emails to my MP, Miss Anne Begg, in regards to looking into the arrest of Robert Green, and I've had no contact whatsoever uh, back from them. Uh, also, from talking to other people in, in Aberdeen, I believe this is very common. Anne Begg seat is actually the one that Robert would be contesting, and I would gladly have him as my representative over the card that is currently not representing Aberdeen South. I feel inspired by Robert Greg. That's from Greg. Thank you very much for that. Uh, how does that make you feel, Robert? Obviously, there is a lot of support for you out there. Well, it's very kind of you, Greg. Thank you very much indeed for that. And it does mean a lot to me, and obviously, especially for uh, Holly and Anne. Uh, so that kind of support, it takes courage to come out and say that, because you live in a country where uh, suppression is a regular feature, and it does take guts to do that. I admire anybody. The support we get is wonderful, but I particularly and, and of my people from Scotland who are coming forward and there are a lot of, re Scotland are brave and there are some really brave people coming forward and you're one of them Greg, thank you. Alright, we're going to do, uh, we've got a big announcement to make, well it's not really an announcement but we're just going to keep it hush for the next five minutes uh, and then we're going to do something quite, uh, quite outrageous. Uh, but let's just get back into the interview I did earlier in the week with Anne. This is kind of the second part of us, uh, of Anne telling me about when she first went to the police about Holly's case. And, you know, we went in and we saw this Joan Morrison and uh, Holly told her about, you know, about her father and the abuse. And uh, the first question that Joan Morrison asked Holly was, uh, when did, you know, this start? And Holly turned around and went, Brazil. And at that point, I didn't even know that. And I went, Brazil? You know, and Holly went, yeah. Yeah. I says, Brazil, I says, you were only six. Yeah. Where's Brazil, mummy? Yeah. And that's how that, yeah. yeah. 
and then she put, you know, everything into place. Holly had to, you know, go to a special house, you know, and be interviewed, and she did that over, you know, uh, I think it was three days altogether, I think, you know, and, uh, you know, all the sort of interviews were done and everything, and then it was Alison Durwer that did the, the interviewing, and uh, the next thing was, I get a phone call, you know, a few months down the line. So I was waiting and waiting, you know, to see what was happening, you know, when they put the stuff to the front of physical's office. I never got a letter. I never got anything. I got a phone call at half past six at night from someone. No collaborative evidence. And during the, the summer, you know, uh, Holly you know, disclosed to myself and some relatives about these other people. So on the 25th of August, uh, we went back out to, to Bucksburn, and it was at Leanne Davidson, and uh, I was taken, separated from Holly, and she asked me, uh, you know, what Holly had said, and I told her what Holly had said, you know, the, the people that were involved. And, you know, she sat and took my statement and, and everything like that. And then I was taken back to the room where Holly was. And she was sitting there with Nicola Foote, who was a social worker, who was a social worker that was involved with Alison Durward in the first interview. And Holly was crying, you know. And, you know, I said, oh, what's wrong, Holly, you know. And uh, she was she's just a bit upset, you know. And... Uh, I says, oh, come on, there's a McDonald's not far. I says, come on, I'll cheer you up, you know, and take you to McDonald's, you yeah? know. So we went to McDonald's, we sat in, and Holly oh, loves McDonald's, you know, and loves her food. And we got our, our burger and chips, and she couldn't eat it, you know, and she was uh, disorientated, and, you know, she had dilated pupils. And we took our burger and we went back in the car, because, you know, and we were driving uh, down to the, you know, there's a, a roundabout in Aberdeen uh, called the Hannigan uh, roundabout. We are just coming up to there and she told me that this uh, Nicola Foot had stuck a needle in her leg. So I just about turned round that roundabout and I went away back. And we went into the, the police station and got this Leanne Davidson again. And I told her what, I mean Holly told her what uh, as well, yeah, what this had happened. And she said that she would get a police doctor. So Holly and I sat there for two and a half hours waiting for a police doctor to come. And uh, she eventually came in and said, we can't get a police doctor, you'll just have to go home. Right? So uh, I went home. I was very concerned. I phoned her uh, GP that we just changed to. Took her there, we got an emergency appointment, got, took her there. He refused to do a blood test. Uh, he gave her a, a bottle and he says, get her to, you know, put a sample in there, a urine sample in there and just post it in. And we did that and it came back negative. Surprise, surprise, eh? This is Manchester Radio Online. You're listening to the Tony Legend Show. Uh, we're into the second hour of the show now, and uh, thanks to everyone who's been getting in touch with us so far. Uh, keep the keep the emails and stuff coming. Studio at ManchesterRadioOnline.com. And we're covering the case of Holly Gregg. Now, we know with a certainty that Holly Gregg was sexually abused by her dad. Now, he is a free man. He is now in Portugal, and he seemingly is without a care in the world. Uh, and we're going to actually try and get... We have got Dennis Mackey's phone number, and we're going to ring Dennis Mackey live on air after this. Uh, but right now, we just want to play a clip from uh, Anne talking about her ex-husband, Dennis Mackey. Let's discuss Dennis Mackey. He's obviously living free in Portugal. That's correct. How does this make you feel, and what would you like to see done? Well, it's not just me that would like to see this. Holly would like to see this. You know, she wants this man charged, and she wants to see him in jail. Don't you? Yeah. Obviously you're very frustrated at the, the lack of cooperation from the, the mm. Scottish police. Do you think that anyone's looking for him in Portugal or no. do you think he's relaxed? No, he's totally, totally relaxed. It took me two years, because my son was involved in it as well, and Holly named him, right? It took me two years 
to actually get the police to interview my son. Two years after, so that was 2002, when they interviewed my son. And he came to my home and, you know, caused havoc, you know, in front of my neighbours and everything. And he was banging on my, you know, one of my neighbours' doors, because I was in there with Holly, you know, sheltering from him. And uh, the police were called, the police let him go, and we tried to get an interdict to keep him away. And I eventually had to, the, the police wouldn't give his, his address, you know, and I eventually had to, you know, phone uh, Jack Boyle, in fact, the psychologist, phoned the chief constable and said, you know, we need this man's address to get this interdict, you know, put in place.